Hello and welcome to this little update to Background Designer. I'm just going to run the software through the SDK I'm using, which is GameMaker Studio 2. So as soon as this opens, you're going to have your brush already set up of Cloud 1. And you can see you can switch through these clouds. The colors are completely random and you can randomize them even more. If you press spacebar, it will randomize the two gradients used for the sky. And if you press tab, it will randomize through the, the colors used inside the actual brush asset. So if I just click on this rock six, this is my little test cube for now. This is basically just a good way to show you how this works. Now, if you go over to the color swatches here, and you've got your brush, it basically switches it out to this preview so you can see exactly how the tones are being affected. Right, so nothing's happening with this black tone because I never used very much black tone in this other than for the kind of shading around the edges. So you can see if I move that to black or to white, it kind of shows up. There's also a preview down the bottom right there to see a smaller version of it. Okay, so I can choose how much of that I want to be in here, but that itself is affected by this. So it either becomes transparent or solid. So anything that's got black in the actual image, I can make transparent through this slider. Okay, anything basically blue, I can choose to be any color I want. And so on. I can also save all these by clicking here. And it just saves that little swatch set up. If I right click, I can swap them out for a different one. Right click. Press tab. Left click. Store that. Right click. Left click. We'll store these. Okay, so switch to any asset. It's going to use the current color setup. So I might have an ideal one for trees. Let's go ahead and idealize these to be just like what this tree would be like, I guess. This looks like a birch tree to me, so I will make it look like a birch tree type colors. And I can go ahead and save those colors. Now, the only issue with this is it's saving the gradients as well. So later I'm gonna split this into two different rows. There'll be a row up here for the gradients and this one will store these colors. Okay, I'm gonna change the opacity here. And there you go. So I've got the store for these trees. Now when you're laying these out, you can use the mouse wheel to change the scale or use the brackets key, keys. If you hold down, that'll go a bit faster. Okay, and wherever you place these, it's gonna cut the other half and put it on the other side for you so that you get this tiled background. And that's the idea behind this, uh, that it makes a tiled backdrop. Later I'll have the ability to switch this off and different sizes of space you can work in. You can click here to change the layer so that you can work kind of further away. And if you press X, you can flip the asset horizontally. So here I'm going further back. So the further down you go in the layers, the further back you're going. Here I'm just making some adjustments to this tree to make it look a little bit more interesting. And there's also foliage. Let's 
store that color set. Let's recall this one to see if it's something better. Then make an adjustment to that. I can use Alt to pick any colors there and make any changes. I'll go ahead and store that one. And you see I can work behind. I've got a few foliage brushes here just to make it look a bit different. You can also use E and R to rotate as well as flipping to get something more unique. So flipping, scaling and rotating. And there's also some grass shrubs and bushes. I'm going to change this base color a bit. Okay, something a bit more bluey green. And I'm going to change these to red. There we go. If you hover over each layer, you can see a preview of roughly what's in there. Uh, if you want to see the layering a bit better, press P and you'll switch into this parallax mode. You can also use the right mouse button to pan around. I'll press P to disable that again. I'm just going to draw in some grass. You see it's overlapping these parts. So I'll work. Yeah, I'm going to work on layer 9 for these ones. I'll flip X every now and again just to get a little bit of variation. I can also scale every now and again. back a bit. I'm going to press 9 for a little bit less opacity. These numbers represent the top row of number keys on your keyboard. So you can kind of make it fade a little bit. I'm just going to decrease the scale as well for that extra bit of realism. And then back down again. Now I'm behind these trees. At this point I'll choose to do something with the colours just to make them a bit softer. I'm going to press space a few times just to change the background. That looks quite nice so I'll store that. Quite a few nice skies. I can make my own sky as well. Okay, store that. Let's go to one of these further away layers and put the opacity right down, maybe seven. Also have a little footpath here. Let's just make sure I have that in the foreground. Press zero to have full opacity back. I'm going to press tab a few times to see if I get a color that makes more sense. This one looks quite nice, but you can see there's a blue outline to it. So I'm just going to change the tone here. Make sure you choose one of these colors. I think that should help. There we go, I've just made that a bit darker. Replace this little pathway here. And now I've got some grass that I could add in. Again, I'll just use tab to get a few colors that are nearby. I'm just going to go into the foreground a bit more. Press P, you can see how these move around.
Now I can come even more into the foreground here and add other things. Uh, perhaps some foreground grass here. You can press the middle mouse button to reset the view or press the home key. Now I'm just going to go back to the furthest away point where there could be some distant clouds. And just press tab a few times to get some colours that work. Okay, these are quite close, so I'll change these up. Gonna rotate using the R key. Let's see if I can flip that. Make it look more interesting and maybe grab clouds here. Okay. Uh, in front of those clouds, going to add some mountains to press zero. Quite like that colour set, so I'll store that there just in case. Let's see if I can get something a little bit nicer. It's quite nice, but let's just change a few of these tones to be a bit cooler. And press 8 or 7 to fade it a bit more in the background. Let's grab another one. And another one here. And that's pretty much that. So press P and press B to hide the brush. I can now kind of move around. It has a kind of parallax effect. It's not perfect because some of the objects take up a bit more space and don't have a lot of distance to them. So I'm going to press P and to save, I just do Control S. That's going to save a single image out. the surface that it's created. It's um, two times HD resolution so it's, it's quite a big size. Um, if we do offset with this you'll see that it tiles. There's no weird seam line or anything like that so you can kind of use that kind of like a little panoramic view if you wanted. Uh, we can also export actual layers, so the L key. Now this is very slow because each layer takes a little bit of time to save. see already it's exported a couple of layers but each one is taking a bit of time I've actually figured out that it's saving each step so I need to work on that it's basically drawing and saving and drawing and saving and drawing just like uh, you were when you were actually making the document uh, that's something that I could definitely fix let me just open up the first view here. You can see how you can reuse these later. You've got your background, 
copy everything on this layer. That's going to be that layer there. Everything on this layer here. And so on until you've built up the image. Okay, it might not look one to one because of the nature of these surfaces that I've used. Um, loss and the brightness of things so some things might need fine tuned a little bit like that but you can definitely use this as a parallax background now. All these parts should be tileable. So I use the offset on this. You can see there's no weird seam line. If you put these in your game as separate layers, you can move them at different speeds based on the player and you can tile them so that they would sit right next to each other. like that. So you wouldn't be able to tell where that seam was. So as you can see it's building up even more of those layers. And it only saves the layers that you place something on. I'm going to go ahead and fix this little bug that takes, uh, it's making these take too long and hopefully I'll update that soon. But that's pretty much it for this version. So it's actually version 0 0.21, I need to change that. Um, and there's a few things I want to fix, plus there's more brushes I want to make. There's enough things there to get you started on making a nice image. Uh, I'd love to see what you make. So feel free to post wherever you found this, uh, some comments or through Discord. Uh, soon there'll be some extra props, people and animals put in here, some more pathways. And so on. Thanks for watching this video, I'll catch you in the next one, bye!